If you want to get top marks on GCSE, it's not just about science anymore. You have to be able to have good English. Here, Mrs. Salas and I are going to talk you through how to write a perfect six mark answer. So this is the question, the sort of question that you might get given in the exam. There's going to be a lot of text and there's going to be um, a question at the bottom. First thing I want you to do is just to read everything through once over and then get a highlighter pen and go through, start highlighting bits of information. So the first thing I want you to look at is here, they want you to state the advantages and the disadvantages of limestone quarrying. They want you to use information in the text and your prior knowledge. So they do want you to refer to what's in the text above and they want you to refer to what you've learnt in lessons. So we can see the area has a large working age population. It's got several schools, it's got lots of new houses, it's got good transport links and sits in some beautiful countryside. So when we're thinking about our question, these are the sort of things we need to be putting in our answer. This is the best fit mark scheme that the examiners use. This question is out of six, and the first thing they'll do is read over the whole question and decide whether it's a basic answer, whether it's a clear answer, or whether it's a detailed answer. What I want you to notice, for the detailed answer, you're going to need faultless spelling, punctuation, and grammar, and if there are some errors in it, then you are limiting yourself to a maximum of four marks. You really can't get above four marks unless your spelling, punctuation, and grammar is basically faultless. You also need to have it coherent and organised. If it has some structure or an organisation, you're limiting yourself to three or four marks. If there is poor organisation, you're limiting yourself just to one or two marks. Here we need detailed knowledge supported by examples and evidence. And here we just need knowledge. So this is going to be something like the specific points that the examiners are going to be looking for, that there are going to be jobs for local people, trade for local businesses and resources for the economy. The disadvantages could be that there are traffic, that there's going to be different types of pollution and there's going to be a loss of tourism. So here is an example of a poor answer. I put the question at the top here so we can refer to it, the best fit mark scheme, and then there are the specific points. Now if we look at this question purely as a as a science question, you can see it's actually not a bad answer. It gives jobs to people here. So that's going to be jobs for local people. It causes lots of traffic, so that's going to be a disadvantage. Um, you can get a bacon sarnie in the breakfast. So poor spelling, punctuation and grammar there, but what they're referring to is there are going to be trade for local businesses, but it's going to make the school noisy. So that's going to be your pollution. So this has the potential to be a good answer, but what's letting it down is... The spelling, punctuation and grammar is weak, there's no specialist terms and it has poor organisation. This is how I like my student to lay out an advantages and disadvantages question by having two columns, so advantages over this side, disadvantages over this side and then because this is a six mark question I always like to have three advantages and three disadvantages and that's what this student has done here, given us three advantages and three disadvantages. But just because I've done that doesn't mean they're going to be getting the six marks because this still has some errors in spelling, punctuation and grammar. We are missing capital letters. We are missing full stops. It's not written in full sentences. There is some structure, but is not supported by examples and evidence. So while the, on the face of it, this looks like a really good answer, we've got three advantages, we've got three disadvantages. It's letting itself down because of the spelling, the punctuation and the grammar. At this point, I'm going to turn this over to our English expert, Mrs. Salis, who is going to turn this into a perfect six mark answer for you. Thanks Primrose Kitten. As an English teacher I'd be looking at these two skills, being coherent and organised. And the first skill, being coherent, is using paragraphs. And the second skill is going to be using connectives. And although in English I'd encourage you to use several connectives, I think for the purpose of this we'll just focus on this one. However, that will mean I'm coherent and organised. Every time you use however, I'm going to ask you to use a comma. However is always the start of a sentence, 
which is why I've used a capital here, and that's going to give you a trick to get through the spelling, punctuation and grammar. OK, so here's my answer organised into paragraphs. One advantage of limestone quarrying is the increase in jobs for local people in an area with a large working age population. Then I've looked at um, a counter-argument, something that would go against it, and so I've used the connective however, remember the comma, and remember there's always a full stop before it. However, dust produced by mining may increase pollution and asthma, which is particularly dangerous to local schools. OK, now, why do I start a new paragraph? Because I'm going to start a new topic here. And the topic, obviously, is still mining, but I'm looking at a different advantage, so it's a new topic. Another advantage is increased trade in local shops, cafes and restaurants, who will, that probably should have been which will, but never mind, which will provide food and services to the large workforce. Once again, I'm going to introduce a counter-argument, this time with however, there's the full stop, there's the capital, and there's always a comma after however. The increase in workforce will result in increased traffic, causing jams. Now, again, I'm going to start with a connective here, moreover, and whenever I start a sentence with a connective, I follow it with a comma. Moreover, large lorries might damage the road surfaces. Now, you should be getting good at this. Why have I started a new paragraph here? Well, because, once again, it's a new topic. Limestone is a useful resource, which can be used in products such as cement and toothpaste. Again, I'm going to introduce the counter-argument here. And there's always a full stop before however, and there's always a comma after it. Mining is noisy, which may disrupt the lives of local residents and schools. And uh, what we have here is six points, uh, three of them for their advantages, three of them against, they're the disadvantages, and I've signalled those to my examiner with the however, and as long as I use however three times, I know that I'm going to have uh, an advantage this side, disadvantage that side, an advantage this side, disadvantage that side, an advantage this side, and a disadvantage that side. So there you go. Easy as could be, I hope. Uh, sorry about my appalling handwriting. But I hope approaching this question like an English student will help you get 100%. Incidentally, here's a picture of my son. There he is in the Dallas Cowboy changing rooms. And I'm showing it to you because he got 100% in all of his science GCSEs. Now, this is him a few months after that. And I asked him how he did it. He said, well, my science teachers taught me some science, but they never taught me what Primrose Kitten is teaching me. They never taught me this, spelling, punctuation and grammar. And so he said, I taught myself. And that's how he did it, 100%. So uh, your teacher is well ahead of the game, and so are you. Good luck in your exams. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos. Check out my website, promoscreen.com, for any new videos, all the videos sorted by exam board, the blog, and any um, extra advice there is. Any comments, questions, topic requests, or um, corrections below.